Hi, everybody. Today I have Angie Valdivia and Jose Vieta from JVL Construction. JVL Construction opened its doors in 2010 as a two-person operation committed to rebuilding New Orleans in the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina. Having witnessed firsthand the struggle of homeowners trying to rebuild in a challenging climate, Jose decided to create a company that would focus on high-quality craftsmanship and products, outstanding customer service, and a dedicated team. So thanks for your time today, and welcome to the show. Thank you, Mark, for having us. Yeah, nice nice to meet both of you, and I'm, I'm curious to learn more about your story. So to kind of get us kicked off, Jose, maybe you could kind of take us back to 2010. And, uh, you know, I mean, everybody obviously knows about Hurricane Katrina, but talk to me about what, is, what was it you saw and, and that really inspired you to go out and start this company? All right. Hey, Mark. Uh, first of all, thanks uh, for giving us the opportunity to use this platform to reach to uh, some people and to share our history. Um, as you say, my name is Jose Villeda uh, from JLB Construction. Um, we started 2010. And before I keep going, I just want to say something that I have it here in my chest. Uh, I just want to thank uh, this country really uh, to, to us has been a land and opportunities. Um, we are probably the reason why so many people want to came and leave everything behind in pursuit of their dreams. Um, in the 17 plus years that we've been here, I've been seeing how a lot of people that was born with everything, it's kind of easy to take from granted everything that, yeah. that, that they have. Um, we as an immigrants can quickly see and really uh, appreciate all the opportunities that this country has to offer to everybody. Um, we bought Angelica and myself, we came here about a little bit over seven, 17 years ago, empty handed, literally. Uh, no money, no formal education, um, no business experience, and to be honest, not even speaking the language, which by the way, I'm guilty, I still don't speak, uh, You're doing, you're doing years, but working on it. Um, so, you know, I want to take this platform to share our history and I hope that some people get benefit to our history and get a little bit of inspiration, um, especially to the Latino community. And if they are thinking or wanting to start a, a small business, it is doable, it is possible. And I just want to say that before I, I start with, with everything else. Um, we start 2010. Um, Actually, a little bit before than that, I was I started doing construction. I didn't have any experience in the construction industry. Um, I just didn't have much options. Like when I came here with, with no experience at all, um, it was just either work on a restaurant or work on a construction industry. And at that time, construction was better paid, so that's why I had to say, okay, let's do construction. Right. So I started doing construction, I learned how to do it. And that's how I started kind of, um, liking it. I, I started doing it myself and I started seeing a little bit easy. It feels natural for me and you know I learned one trade and then another one and then another one. Finally I decided to start my own business 2010 and that's how, how everything started. So the the Katrina was in 2010? What year was the, the hurricane? Well Katrina was 2005 actually. Okay 2005. So I, but, yes, you, but you were I, here then so you, you guys were here when? Well, when, actually, when relative to the hurricane did you actually get to the States? Well, um, I came to the States in 2005, like August 15. Katrina hits August 30, 29. Wow. But I went to Texas. I didn't come to New Orleans, so I went okay. to Texas. So I worked over there for a couple months. And then a guy that I met there, his name is John Mora, he has some experience in construction, so he decided to come here uh, to get to New Orleans to do some construction business, and he invited me to come here. Like I said, at that time, I didn't have family here, I didn't have nothing to, to no tides in, in Austin, Texas, that's the first place that I went. So I decided to come here to New Orleans. So lots, lots of work, obviously, then, in the aftermath of the hurricane, right? Lots to do, so you spent about, well, I guess five years in in New Orleans, working with uh, with him, yeah. Before you, before correct. you started started your business. Mm-hmm. That's correct. So, so 
I mean, what was kind of the big, the big observation, the big lesson that you learned? Uh, you know, you, I'm sure you got lots of experience in all the different facets of construction and, and just kind of seeing how that community had to, had to respond to the, the devastation of the hurricane and, and all of that. What was it that really, you know, said, hey, I, I, I think it's time for me to go do this on my own? Uh, I think it was two two parts of that. Uh, the first part, um, after the first couple of years, I started doing little jobs for people. Like they were hiring me to do, you know, painting their house, doing some tile work, do, doing some drywall repairs. And as I was going into these jobs, I started working on really uh, on the really low income families at that time. And I started seeing how bad these people were treated. Like a lot of people after Katrina, everybody become a contractor. Everybody was a general contractor. And they really didn't know what to do or they didn't care about what we're doing. They were just going there for the quick money. And sometimes they were taking money away from people or they were just doing any anything just to get a check and then disappear. So homeowners stay with this pain, with this, you know, have uh, work done and we, or I was kind of high at the beginning just to correct what that somebody else was done already. So to me, it was really sad to see that on people. It's like, why? Why it should be like this? You know, that shouldn't, it shouldn't happen. You know, when you commit to some, something, you, you should go and, and see it through and, and be there for your customers. That's when we opened uh, job Construction, just because we want to create a, a different company, some, mm -hmm. some company that really care about the customers, that they really care about doing a good work and, you know, not being there just for the quick money, just, you know, do it because it's what you love to do. So that's, that, that, that's one of the main things that uh, pushed me to, to open um, job Construction. That was probably the first moment uh, that, that kind of hits me. And then the next moment, was probably 2014. Uh, Joby was existing already, and uh, at that time I had uh, the privilege and the opportunity for the first time in my life to own a house. Mm -hmm. So that's when I when I bought uh, my first house. Um, of course, doing what I do, I get a house, the horrible house, the, the you know, <laughs> the house that needs everything, and I was kind of say, no, I'm gonna fix it, I'm gonna do it. And on the process, because I didn't have much money, I had to do a lot of the work myself. So I was kind of going to work uh, on the day. And then after four or five o'clock, I was kind of heading to the house to start kind of doing a few things myself. And one time I was just sitting, uh, looking about everything that I want to do in the house. And uh, something really happened that, that day. I was sitting on the floors and that area is where the kitchen is supposed to be. And then I start dreaming, like literally seeing myself on the house, doing what I want to do, like inviting friends uh, over, having some drinks, cooking, and having fun. And then I walk on the outside where, where the new party is going to be, and I see myself running with my dogs. At that time, I didn't have kids. I just had two dogs that were like my kids. And I just see myself playing with them. And, and, and then it's like something hit me. It's like... Shoo, this is what people pay me for. Like that, this is the reason why I'm doing what I'm doing. This is the huge responsibility. It's like, oh my God, that's when it hits me. So I think that those two moments were the ones who define the, 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 the trajectory of JLP construction, give us our, our mission, our purpose, and the passion why we're doing what we're doing. Right. So, so, you, so you saw that people deserved better than what they were getting, right? And right. then you saw the impact that, you know, a house, a, 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 a nice quality house can, can have on their ability to spend time with friends and family and make those memories and, and all the stuff that people appreciate about the, the opportunity on a home, that right? That, that's part of what we said. We, we don't believe that we're building homes. We are thinking that we are fulfilled people's dreams because that's what is going to happen. A house right. is a place where... A life is going to happen, good moments, bad moments, uh, everything, and that's what we are doing. Right. So, all right, so let's bring Angie into the story here. So, you know, 2010, you start the company, 2014, you know, you, you get your, your, your first house. Uh, so, so how do you get connected with Angie? And, and Angie, maybe you, you tell me that story from your perspective. Um, 
Um, I've been meeting Jose for a long time. I will say 2012, we've been friends. And it was one time I will never forget that um, in my, um, that moment, my actual job, uh, um, I was going to lunch and I crossed the street. And when I crossed the street, he was passing by. And he was like, hey, how are you? Oh, this is where you work. And I was like, yeah. By the way, I'm looking for another job. <laughs> if you thought it was something, he was like, well, actually, yes, look. I mean, I have my own construction company, as you know, and I'm looking for someone to help me out to do the admin work and all that because I'm doing everything by myself. And then when I say, yeah, I was going to talk about it for sure. And we got together, made for lunch to talk about, you know, uh, what is the position about. At that moment, he, he was completely honest. He told me, look, uh, I know I need someone. I just don't know for what. <laughs> And I was like, well, I'll take your I take your risk. I see the vision that he has. And I was like, okay, I wanna be part of this dream. So I started with him. When I started with him, he didn't even have an office space. So so what year was this again? Oh, twenty fifteen. Twenty fifteen, gotcha. Okay. Yes. Didn't even have an office so, at that point. He didn't have an office. Uh the first two, three weeks I worked on his basement with a little computer and he came to me like, look, this is my finance and my notebook. <laughs> I don't know exactly what I need you for, but I need you. <laughs> so that's how everything is starting our relationship with business relationship with him. Right. Okay. So 2015, so we're, we don't have an office yet. Uh, so you're still, you know, just kind of slowly pulling it together, getting clear on where you're trying to go, building the team. So, so Angie's your, I mean, how many people did you have when, when Angie came on board, Jose? Well, we have, um, because at that time we were actually doing all the work. So we have at that time probably about seven uh, full-time employees and myself, but it was just few people, you, you know, it, it was not, no, Nobody no management, no, no. it was just me doing everything. Right. So, and I actually, I give it to her. Um, I never thought that, that she would say, yes, I want to work with you because one, I said, look, I don't even know if I want to be able to have your full time. It's like, uh, I will try my best, but but I cannot promise that because, you know, for some time I, I was scared about, you know, doing the the, the next step, like hiring people and, and you know, it's like, uh, with, with a few guys, it was not a commitment. Mm -hmm. You know, we work any time that we have work, but, you know, when it slows down, but, you know, they go and find something else. You know, with Andy, it was a little bit different. It was like a compromise, like, okay, I'm going to have you 40 hours and I want to be able to pay you and... So uh, I gave it to her. So she she uh, <laughs> took a big big risk. Um, go ahead. Yes. So so yeah. So so it, you know the business is growing. You know you, you bring this is your first real employee hire, right? That's that's not just kind of a, a, a job uh, or project specific hire. Um, and so it, it continues to grow from there. So 2015 on. So talk to me. When did when did EOS come into the mix? Uh, how did you find out about EOS? When did that that whole process start? EOS um, actually happens about a year and a half ago. Okay. No, two years, actually two years ago. So 2020? We were uh, taking some coaching from um, a firm that we're paying them like the like monthly base just to kind of give us ideas and coaching us how to do business. They were specialized on residential construction and we stayed with them for a year. We learned a lot actually. Um, and then he, um, Paul actually was Paul and Ed, um, who says, look, here's the, this book. I recommend you to read the book. And it was the, uh, the EOS, uh, so that's the first time that we hear about EOS and we, I read the book and then I give it to Angie. And at that time we we're already having all these frustrations, all these pains and, you know, like accountability issues and management and, you know, all the things that, that uh, EOS focused on, on fixing it. So, uh, and it was like, we need something, we need, uh, we need to do something if we want to keep growing. By that time we were better organized, we got already an office. Uh, Actually, um, 2016, actually a year after uh, Angelica uh, joined the company, I took a class called uh, 10,000 Business, which is uh, a program that helps a small business to get better. 
So I applied for the for the classes. I got accepted. I took the, the, the classes, and that was probably the first time that I have some a structure that when I start kind of saying that oh I need this I need that I need a business plan I need like a lot of things that that probably many people start with since the beginning I kind of learned it halfway on business. Um, but then uh, we start taking some other uh, other classes, and then finally EOS. When we when we um, read the book, we want to do it, but we feel that we didn't have the people in place to be able to to do the the um, the system. Yeah. Yeah. The so, how many people did you have at that point in time? At that time, we have um, it was Angie and. Uh, we just got Shelly and Ben, so probably about four people on the administration side, and we still got a lot of people in the field. In the field, right? So, okay, so you got four people, you've read the book, you want to do it, not sure you've got the people in place yet to do it, so what did, where'd, you, where'd you go from there? Well, after that, um, we kind of were thinking and talking internally, and... Um, then finally, the, the uh, beginning of this year, end of the last year, we finally said, no, we have to do it. It's time for us to do it because we were growing so quick and we're feeling that we cannot manage it. Like literally, we said, look, we want to size it down because at this space, we're not going to be able to, to control it. We're not going to be able to manage it. And I was at a point that is just, that's enough for me. I, I just don't want to keep growing. I, I want to stay small. I know what I want to do. I can control this this small company. Um, that's enough. But Andy was kind of keep pushing. No, we, we can do better. Uh, we we want to have the tools in place. Let's do EOS. And then finally, we start calling um, uh, implementers to see who can um, take us and. and Teaches about so, so, so is that really the first time that you learned about the the, the idea of the visionary and the integrator? Was when you I mean, you obviously you read it a little bit in traction, but then you you I'm, I'm guessing that when you started work with an implementer, they really helped you make that real. Uh, is that is that accurate? Is that kind of when that in that focus day when you did the accountability chart? That's when it kind of got real. Uh, Probably uh, a little bit um, earlier, just because, you know, we read all of the books. We read um, What the Heck is EOS, uh, Traction, and then I'm not sure if Rocket Fuel was before or after. But at that time, we, we got a, a good idea, and then we did some research online to see what what EOS was, and, and kind of we started getting an idea of the uh, visionary and the implementer. But... Um, um, you know, not, not completely sure who, who was, uh, who. So, okay. So as you, as you began to fill those seats though, as you understood them, the visionary seat and the integrator seat, what was sort of the big, let me stop for a second because we're getting an echo and I think it's coming on and Angie's side for some reason. Can you guys hear the echo? Sometimes, when I, when right when now, I, I cannot. Yeah, when I, when I talk, I was hearing yeah. it on Angie's. Now it's not doing it. Okay. Let's, well, let's try to just pick it up. So let me try to get back into that. So, all right. So you build your accountability chart. You define the visionary seat and the integrator seat. And uh, Angie, was it clear to you that you were the integrator? Was that just the obvious, obvious answer? Yes, to me, and I uh, did a ha-ha moment when I read the Rockefeller book by Gino. So when I started from the beginning, because on the beginning of the book, started talking about visionary. Oh, how the visionary, I can think, I was like, ha-ha, that is Jose at the big time. <laughs> And then when they started talking about integrating, I started feeling myself in a lot of the spots. So it's like, yeah, that sounds like more like me, what I've been doing already, the job that I've been doing. So, so that, that made sense to you to step into that role and, and kind of take that on. Did you have trouble defining the two seats? Did you have trouble saying, okay, for us, this is what, you know, the visionary is going to do and this is what the integrator is going to do? Was that, 
uh, challenging or was that, you know, how did, how did you figure out the definition of those two roles uh, for your company? It was pretty challenging just because uh, it was us running everything. So we overlap our responsibility. Sometimes we both were doing the same thing. Uh, I was being on the sales side and on, on the field side. Angelica was more on like uh, controlling in the office and building and all of that. But, but there was a lot of things that we were overlapping. So be able to separate those, those areas was a little bit uh, tricky uh, at the beginning. And then of course, when we are bringing more people, uh, make people accountable, it, it, that was also a little bit challenging. Um, and I, I'm not good about that. <laughs> it's like, yeah, uh, yeah. it's not, not your, most, not your uh, natural gift, right? No, no, no. Um, so and then Angelica was more like me. Mean. Wow, Angie, he just said you're mean. <laughs> mean in a good way. No. In a good way. Somebody has to be mean, right? Somebody has to, Somebody has to be direct. Somebody has to call it, call it like it is. So, Angie, is that easy for you to kind of tell people how it is? I think um, it's not easy to, you know, um, it's not easy to manage my people, but I think it's hard when you know what you need to do and what your mm-hmm. responsibilities are. Mm-hmm. So um, the challenge to me is more like once that you define what is the vision and our responsibilities and integral responsibilities to keep on track on them. Like you don't get on my bubble, I don't get your bubble, I mean you do your job, I do my job, but as a visionary I think it's also really hard and because we've been doing everything on our own for so long, it's also really hard to do let go of things. So, so was that was it easy as you defined the differences, defined the different seats? Was it easy, you know, to stay out of each other's lane, uh, or or was that to take a while to kind of figure out? Okay, now I got to stop getting into that. Let her handle that, or let him handle that. Uh, was there a was there a learning curve there? I think that it wasn't. It still is. Um, I, I think to me one of the biggest. Uh, problems or struggles that I'm having is that it's easy for me to give the answers to everybody. So when somebody has a problem, it's like, I know the answer, I know the answer. I, But, you know, trying to make them figure it out on their own, to me, that's been the biggest challenge. But it's been with everybody else, with Angie, no. Because, I don't know, um, because we've been working together for so long, we got that chemistry and I know that I can be tough with her and she will be okay. You know, when, when she comes to me, it's like, okay, I, I wanna play the role, right? Like, you know, what would you would do? Uh, you know, in this case, what is the best? And I, I asked her to give me the answers and she knows that. So she just like, go back mad with me and just go, ah, I know the answer. So I'm, you know, leave you alone. And he just go back to her office. and. <laughs> We're here to me, it's really easy to do it, right. but sometimes with everybody else, I got a little bit of uh, struggle. I don't know, I, I trust everybody on the team, but again, sometimes it's easy to give them the answers. So how many people are on the team now? There's we 16. Have... How many? Oh, the right employees, 16. 16. Employees. And then yes, you got... Yes, and subcontractors, I mean, and uh, like 100. Yeah. So you got tons of tons of people in the field, but you got 16, 16 full time employees or employees in the in the office or uh, however however that structure is. So it's grown a, a lot, right? I mean, from from you know Jose and uh, you know slowly over time. So how do you how do you stay on the same page? How do you how do you proactively uh, make sure that you're staying in alignment and do what you can to you know minimize the the friction or the surprising each other, however you want to think about it. How do you guys stay on the same page? Uh, look, that, that one is, 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 is tricky. We do have um, monthly same page meetings. Good. And usually it takes about four hours. But the problem is that, you know, we run the company, but we also uh, are on a personal relationship. So that makes it a little bit harder because we are talking to these issues all the time. So for us, it's not just that, you know, you go home and you're still talking about business. You know, we do things at home and then we do things at work and it's really hard for us to 
separate and you know we, we haven't been able to figure out that we were like no no business at home or no business when we are relaxing but it's, it's just not you know we haven't been able to to find uh, a good moment but yeah we, we also do have the uh, the sempish meetings which helps uh, a, a, a lot with this with this issue so Angie, you feel the same way. It's hard to hard to find that balance. It's hard to find a way to sort of draw the line between you know home and and work when when you're, you know, when you're together in both places. Yes, yeah, it's, it's very hard, and we I think we try to work it out right now. Where it's like, okay, we're now work time. It's like we write it down. Don't forget about it. Just write it down for our slam page meeting. Another thing that I was really thinking about, it, maybe the same page being instead of doing once a month for four hours, maybe we do it by weekly where we can be more connected or where mm-hmm. we can talk about everything that we need to talk about. Yeah, the, main, the main thing we wow. want to see in the, in the same page meeting is, you know, at least once a month for as long as it needs to be, right? But if you find that you're, you know, getting off the same page, then, hey, never hurts to do it more frequently, you know, uh, at least you know, sometimes you kind of have a chunk of things that you're trying to get aligned on. And if you need some more time to spend to kind of work through that stuff, it's okay to do that, to do that more often. Yeah. I'll, I'll be but curious you know, to hear. Uh, say it again. Sorry, Jose. No, like, it's kind of hard because you got these ideas all the time. And it's like, I want to tell you, I want to tell you, I want to tell you. And it's like, wait until the sense of I want to forget about it. Just like, let me tell you. <laughs> Sometimes when we go to have lunch or something, I, I, I told him, like, I feel like I need to have my notebook all the time with you to kind of write down your ideas and all that. But even that is hard to keep him on track. Like, um, I will never forget when we have our, we finalize our vision, our 10-year target, our core values, and we were ready to present all this to the whole company to have our uh, stay of the company meeting. And two days before, he was changing his mind. He was changing the decision. He was changing. I was like, oh, my God, if everyone knows about this, the whole company will freak out. I was like, come down. (laughs) I was like, I know this is something we have never. I mean, we always have a target for a year or maybe five years. We'll never have a big vision plan for 10 years. So. I think it was a little scary over mountain, you know, the, the first time. So he was like all around and I was like, and he was like, think about it to change it and do this. I was like, I don't have anything to think about it. <laughs> I was like, no, we're going to keep in track. We're going to do it. We're going to make it happen. So boy, he was like all over the place <laughs> trying to change everything. So it's not easy. An integrator life is not easy. Yeah, it's, 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 you know, visionaries, there's a lot going on up there, right? And, and you know, one of the things I see a lot of integrators do to kind of help that because, Jose, you said it, I don't want to forget it, right? I've got this idea. I don't want to lose it. I want to talk about it right now, right? And so you know, a lot of integrators will find, you know, a place, you know, a way to kind of put, capture that stuff. Not that we have to get into it right now, but, but a place to put it, you know, a way for their visionary to kind of capture those ideas, uh, easily and quickly and then it puts them in there so that when we're ready and we have that dedicated time to come back and talk to them uh think about them and kind of hash them out and kind of figure out what we're going to do with it they're there and we haven't lost anything so there's a there's a big power in the visionary being confident that all these great ideas and of course they think they're all great right jose Uh, they're all great ideas every one of them right and so we don't want to lose any of them and so let's let's hold on to those until we can kind of kind of work them through and then likewise though you know for the visionaries it's a real commitment to not not surprise uh your integrator uh you know so you know particularly not to surprise your leadership team uh and come in and you know angie to like that that scenario where it's like yeah er, we're going to turn a whole different direction here or, or change something you know it's really important that you slow down at least long enough for the two of you the visionary and the integrator to really get on the same page about that that really helps the team uh you know be be confident and and thorough and then they're going to be able to be as as helpful and contribute as much as you need them to to you know whatever direction it is that you're that you're heading i'll be curious to see how you how you work out this kind of life balance thing though so it's not you know, it's not totally blended. You know, I talk to a lot of visionaries and integrators that are 
our spouses or family members or best friends and, and spend a lot of time together. And everybody, uh, every pair seems like they have to kind of figure out their, their own answer to that, to that puzzle. Um, so what have you, yeah, what have you tried? Uh, because we just start with EOS. Like we are, uh, six months, seven months yeah. on the EOS. So okay. we are kind of, yeah, it's, it's kind of early. So we are starting noticing this issue because we start having, um, the same pitch meetings, uh, three months ago. Yeah. So it wasn't like the first one was like, oh, okay, this is kind of new. And then the second one. And then now it's like, we need to do something because we are like the balance is not there right but but also it's not like it bothers well i, I want to talk to for for myself it's not like it bothers me i i'm really passionate about what we're doing and to me talk right. about business sometimes it's not it's not uh that bad uh well but sometimes when we get as, as a discussion and it gets pro a little bit intense but um but yeah, you, we will have to figure it out. We haven't. Yeah. Like, I, like I, I expect says, that eventually you will. You're, like you said, you're early on in the process. I, I, I hope eventually you'll find a way to put some guardrails on that, some boundaries for where you can have that time. What do you What do you guys like to do for fun? What do you What do you What What's your, you know, away from work? What's What's fun to do? Um, myself, um, I like to read, so that's something that I like to do a lot. I like to spend time at home, like really, um, you know, enjoy um, my my the house and be on the patio and and just just relax. Um, what do you like to do together? Cosa? I would say <laughs> travel, right. spend time with the family, with the kids. Um, we love to dance. That's something that really passion us. Um, we haven't done much. We, we, we love to, but we've been so busy that it's just like, like just, just last, uh, like last week that we had the opportunity to, to, to go to a conference together and take some time off. We finally went to dance on a, a Cuban place and it's like, oh my God, it's been so long that we haven't been, in, you know, dancing and having this fun. So yeah, that's something that we love to do. It's just like, you know. Thanks to the U.S., we are feeling like we are getting to the point where we want to have a life again. Mm -hmm. Something that, like, I've been in this business for 12 years, and I've been just putting everything that I have, all my time. Like, it's time for work, and then, you know, before that, the, the, we didn't have kids, uh, was friends and family. But now, with the kids, it's work and kids. That's, that's about it. Mm -hmm. So, we're kind of hoping and I think that we can see the light at the end of the tunnel thanks to the EOS uh, that that we don't have people on you know on, on the right seats or the right people on the right seat right um, that they can help us to right you know work more like normal hours <laughs> yeah, that's that's the that's the idea right it's the EOS life that we talk about and uh, you know like I said you're pretty early in the process here uh, with with EOS so but you know that's some of the big payoff that uh i certainly hope you'll be able to enjoy as you as you continue the journey and you solve some of this stuff uh, you know along the way and, and continue to grow and and uh and experience the benefits that that's that are there for you so yeah, i actually go ahead go ahead i'm sorry no, no go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> well uh, actually like like like, like i was saying um when when we start a job um our revenue was three hundred fifty thousand dollars. You know, year one, that's how much we made uh, on sales. We are this year probably going to close about twelve million dollars, and then our goals for the next year is about sixteen. And you know, in three years, we we'll have to be at twenty-five million dollars. So, to be able to achieve that, you know, we need the U.S. We need to really. Um, learn and, and improve on all the six areas to be able to manage that many. Like for us, with no much experience, that, that would be huge. And, you know, like last year I would say, no, I'm crazy. I'm not doing it. But now, because we feel like we have the tools and, and the confidence that the system that we are creating is going to help us to manage all of that, we feel much better. That's and actually great. it's less stressed. So, yeah. That's good. Well, you've got some, uh, you know, aggressive growth that you're doing and some aggressive growth in front of you. So that's going to be key to stay focused, you know, stay focused on those, 
those foundational tools of EOS and uh, you know the five rules and the five tools of, of, of rocket fuel and make that visionary integrator duo that you've got uh, you know set the set the environment set the direction so that you guys can go and execute and make that happen and have time to go travel and dance right in addition to all the other cool stuff that you're doing well hey I, I really appreciate you taking some time to spend with us today and and, and spend with the folks that, that listen, lots of visionaries and integrators listening to you, hearing, you know, your story, your experience, you know, hopefully that'll help them move along their own journey, uh, you know, maybe a little bit faster, maybe with, with avoiding a little bit of pain along the way. So I'm, I'm very grateful to you for that. If our listeners want to find out more about your company or more or get in touch with, with you guys, what's the best way for them to do that? I think that the best way is just go to our website, um, is www.jlb-construction.com. Um, there is all the links over there for the social media um, that they can uh, reach out to us uh, on there. Perfect. That sounds great. Well, to our listeners, thanks for listening. I uh, hope you've enjoyed this episode, and we'll tune in for, for the next one as well. And so until next time, go Rocket!